How you doing? And welcome back to Taekwondo Bro. Today is a subscriber requested video. So they asked, what type of kicks would you use for self-defense or for anything on the street, right? So simple answer is uh, really easy stuff. Pretty simple. You know, whatever you can do reliably. So nothing crazy. So we're going to start off with the instant sidekick. It's a really great versatile technique. Really easy to do. Doesn't require a lot of flexibility and also hits hard. So the advantage is that if someone's moving towards you, you can hit them right in the gut. Usually people will have their hands a little higher or not even in a guard at all. So you should be able to hit them in the stomach pretty easily. And even if you don't, you'll be able to push them back. So if you miss, you can follow up. So right there I'm doing a turning back fist. It's a little bit harder of a technique, but it's still applicable if you're good at it. Now, if you don't want to try that, the problem with missing on the cold side, which is like you're back to the opponent, is that you're already back to the opponent, which is a horrible spot to be in. So my logic behind using it there is that since you already have your back towards them, you might as well turn all the way around and hit them. And then if you miss to the, the hot side, which is the other one, there's a couple other techniques you can follow up. But the important part is whatever you're good at doing. So if you're not good at turning back fists, don't try it, right? So you miss to the hot side, you can follow up with some elbows, you could, you know, follow up with a clinch. So it's a lot easier on the hot side, which is, you know, your stomach, your face towards them, because you have way more options. But the back side is definitely uh, more dangerous. So again, with the instant sidekick, there's also another variation that you might want to try, and it's the, the slide sidekick, right? So here's how it works. You just chamber your foot up, you're going to lift, and then as you kick, you slide. It's not a skip in, you're not jumping, you just slide like that. So what this does is it lets you get range. So you get more range, and you have more momentum behind your kick. So if they're approaching you, and they're not quite in kicking range yet, you can try this. A, because you'll slide forward, and you know, you'll have more range into them. You'll be able to push them back a lot. So even if you don't hit them with a sharp impact, you'll still push them. And then also, another advantage of this is that, say if you have less reach than uh, whoever you're fighting, like maybe they're bigger or something, you can still get the first hit off on them. Now again, the caveat with this is that make sure you are pretty good at it. So if you're not used to throwing it, obviously, don't try to use it in self-defense. That's going to be the golden message here, is even if something is like more practical than something you know, if you're not experienced with it, don't try it, because you're not going to be able to pull it off well, okay? So, kick number two is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a long front kick. And when I say that, I mean that you're kicking with the back foot. So, there's always two types you can do here. You can go for a thrust front kick, where you're focusing on just pushing them back, where you're hitting with the whole foot, you're, you know, moving with your hips forward, and it's mainly that forward momentum pushing them. You also have a snap front kick, which is pretty much like a punch. So, imagine a punch and a shove, right? The, the thrust front kick is they shove, and the, the snap is like, you know, the punch one. You're hitting them hard. So, I would say, especially for people who aren't that good at kicking, you know, the thrust front kick is probably going to be easier to pull off. All you got to do is hit them, push forward, and uh, just make sure you pull that foot down, you know, after you're done kicking. And also, if it, they don't get pushed back, you can still follow up with some punches, some kicks, you know. It's not going to put you in a bad position, because you're still body forward towards them, you know. You're not doing any turns, nothing crazy like that. And then also, if you want to, you know, put some impact on them, do that. So practice that. It's pretty easy. You just get a punching bag and, you know, go at it. I have a bunch of tutorials for how to do that. So we'll get to a third one, and that's going to be the roundhouse kick. And I'm talking mainly the long roundhouse kick. Now, there's a reason you see this kick so much is that, A, it, it's pretty hard. It hits hard. Uh, B, it's pretty easy to learn, right? And C, you can use it against a lot of ranges. So you can hit up high to the head, you can hit to the stomach, you can kick to the legs, right? So a lot of street fights and, uh, you know, self-defense situations, you might not be kicking up high to the head. You might not want to, especially because if you're not used to it, you end up falling over and then, you know, things turn bad. So a lot of people like to kick to the legs. So the advantage of kicking to the legs is that you're out of range of a lot of techniques. So if your foot can just reach their, you know, their shin or something, or their calf, they're not going to be able to really hit you. So you can focus on just slapping those legs, hitting them hard, hopefully just, you know, tiring them out, maybe slowing them down a little bit. You can also try to hit up a little higher to the, the stomach, depending on where their guard is. So if they kind of have their hands a little bit higher, you know, 
and you can hit him in the stomach or the ribs really hard, that could really put somebody down. So I'm just showing it here on the little dummy. So uh, right to the legs. So the important part about using a roundhouse kick in self-defense is that make sure you have a good pivot and you can turn your hips over. So unlike the front kick, it requires a little bit more flexibility, I'd say. So if you're up to that and more used to that type of stuff, I would say go for it. So I can make this video like two hours long, but I'll just keep it short. So whenever using some type of kick in self-defense, make sure it's something that you're comfortable with and make sure to mind your range. So I think we'll wrap it up here, you know. Uh, pretty much the easy answer is that when you're doing self-defense and uh, you want to try to use really basic techniques So the front kick the side kick the roundhouse kick those are the really basic techniques You know, you're not going to be doing like turning hook kicks or crescent kicks because those are high risk I mean, yeah, they're really powerful But if you mess up you're going to be in a really bad position So just try to avoid crazy stuff like that and on top of that most people out who uh, on the street, you know, could be attacking you or something, they're not really going to be that skilled. So there's no reason to be using, like, meta strategies that you'd be using in a tournament against people. Try to just stick to the basics. Uh, stay aware of your surroundings. And, you know, never try anything that you're not used to. So if I'm, like, you know, never done a roundhouse kick before, just don't try it. Just stick to whatever front kicks, side kicks, or punches, whatever techniques you're good at. That's what's going to get you home. So just try using that. And, you know, I have a bunch of tutorials for a lot of these kicks on my channel. So if you want to learn a few of them, just watch a couple of my videos. I have a bunch of playlists. You can see them there. So good luck with your training, and I will see you next time.